Therapy is um, an ongoing journey of trying to be the best you can possibly be. It's not because there's something wrong with you. You're perfect the way you are right now. If you're going through emotional drainage, you are very tired and fatigued or you have chronic fatigue, I wouldn't suggest to go for an active approach. You don't have enough energy to handle it. Can you, can you just show up for yourself and just be with you, sit with you, um, appreciate, understand? And I think the more you do that for yourself, the more you are able to do that for other people because you see the humanity within you and you're more willing to accept the humanity within others. I think that what I'm primarily interested in is self-discovery. And therapy is one of the tools that we can use when we embark on a journey of self-discovery. My whole life is all about being able to move as quick as I can from one perspective to another and see what I can find. I realise it just started with observing the world around me and then kind of um, comparing that to the world inside me and vice versa. So I was curious about why my inner world at times was very different from the external experience I was having. And that contrast in feelings and, and perceptions led me to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, I like to think of myself as a little explorer of the self. So I think therapy, the concept of therapy, um, has evolved and changed a lot through the years. So societal needs of the past are not the same needs that we have today. Me personally, I believe that therapy should be a holistic tool, something that can provide you a space where you can explore and navigate the self through different layers, uh, from the conscious to the subconscious, to your shadows, to your inner child, parts, aspects of the self. And it should be a very dynamic and creative tool. And uh, because we are not just made of one dimension, we are not monodimensional, we are multidimensional beings. And I think that it's very useful, for example, to navigate the mind and your cognitive part of the self but if we limit the exploration only to that plan, I think that what you find out is also very limited. And you may discover that perhaps your mental dimension is not congruent with your emotional states. And this is what we want to pay attention to. What are the things within you that are not aligned, are not congruent, where these specific things come from? the way they serve you. I don't believe that illness uh, and disease are something that we only want to get rid of. Everything that happens to us can become a huge opportunity for self-exploration and understanding of how you interact with parts within yourself and how your inner self can interact with everything external to you. And this is a constant exchange that happens all the time. Either you're conscious of it or unconscious of it is happening right now. I talk to you and you, you hear my voice, but if you notice where my voice is going, you also notice that maybe some emotions are rising or you are thinking something that maybe is just a result of what I'm saying or you find yourself disagreeing with me or agreeing with me or maybe your body right now is experiencing specific sensations. So when you start looking at the self as a whole, you can, and you learn how to navigate through these different parts of the self, you can pick up on nuances and things much quicker. Your responses, your feelings, that is something that belongs to you and that is something that you may want to learn more, you want to know more about. And you should be curious about because it's unique and your emotional framework is unique. And sometimes that is missed because we're just trying to put things into specific boxes or try to find explanation that may pacify the mind. But if you're really going to go deep down into understanding you, 
I will highly suggest to maybe start researching a little bit or observing a little bit how specific things affect you or the way you respond to specific things or how you receive or not receive specific things or your essential needs, your values, where these beliefs come from. So it's just, um, I think for me, it's all about being curious. And being curious means, yeah, having a part of you that judges and compares and obviously has this way of processing, but opening to a more vast an extended field where there's more things and more possibilities happening at the same time. I do, I think about it all the time. Um, I shared a few times that I've been through a little bit of a crisis when it comes to therapy in the modern day. I think that therapy has been slightly abused because a lot of people seek therapy for the wrong reasons without having enough knowledge of what therapy may involve or what, you know, um, things may happen through the journey. I also realized that because it's very easy nowadays to become a therapist or a coach, people set up practices offering services that are offering results that you cannot achieve in the amount of time that is promised and should not be achieved in the amount of time either. I believe that therapy is a journey that needs to lead to a progression of changing certain things within the self. And I always make this example, like if you go to the gym or if you start a diet, you don't want to lose 20 kilos in a week because you need to give your, your body the time to adjust to the new conditions. If something happens too suddenly, it, have to, it happens too quickly, your body doesn't have the time to digest it, to integrate it properly. I also see that uh, therapy is becoming a bit of a trend um, nowadays. Everybody is an expert when it comes to therapy now. I think that we shouldn't be in therapy for the rest of our life because I don't think that's helpful either. But we shouldn't think that uh, within a week, two weeks, a month, but even three months' time, we're going to have our life sorted out. Therapy is um, an ongoing journey of trying to be the best you can possibly be. It's not because there's something wrong with you. You're perfect the way you are right now. This is what you're working with. Uh, as individuals, perhaps, we want to try to really overcome specific limits that we may have, um, heal inner conflicts we may be experiencing, trying really to be the best we can be for ourselves, but also for, for the others and society itself. But I think that there's a lot of um, confusing messages out there that can lead you to believe things that actually are against evolution. You shouldn't aim for shortcuts. It is not healthy. It is something that I don't see how you can benefit from. I see a lot of people seeking for signs or constantly seeking this validation from the universe that they are on the right path or they're doing the right thing. You don't know if you're doing the right things until you do things, until you try things out. There's not such things as feeling in life. What you do is gaining experience and then understanding what works for you, what doesn't work for you. But I see a lot of people lost in a lot of concepts and ideas that can very heavily remain stuck into the, the mind, into the, the thoughts uh, world. And I believe that life should be experienced. Life should be embodied. Our energy should be embodied. And you should try to find somebody that helps you with that, that doesn't keep you stuck into what you think uh, the world should be or what a relationship should look like or such as ideal relationship or the perfect relationship. All these things, um, they just do not exist. As Young said, uh, we do not evolve by imagining figures of lights. We evolve by making the shadow conscious and becoming aware of or shining the light on our shadows, which some people think is the darkest part of the self, but actually in the shadows there are sometimes the best part of the self, the parts of the self that we haven't had the chance yet to explore and to embody and to express. So I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to therapy. Unfortunately, there's a lot of ignorance as well, um, and there's a lot of um, quick fix and easy path people that don't have enough experience from my standpoint to offer these type of services. I think that 
if you are a therapist, you should be also a researcher, somebody that never stops learning and researching into different healing techniques or modalities and internally into your own rooms, internal rooms. Therapy is a good idea when you are very clear on what you're looking for. Also, it's good to understand what are the differences between one approach to another. So you can choose from whatever you are, from your starting point, what would be the best way to start. I don't suggest starting with shadow work if you've never done any therapy before or you don't know what that may involve because therapy brings up a lot of trauma. Some, some therapeutic approach allow things to surface. The emotional parts of the self that haven't yet heal these emotions will come up again so you will have to face some challenging time and if you're not ready for it it may be very overwhelming you may think that that was the <laughs> the worst thing you ever done in your life and obviously you just run away in terror but if you know what you're doing and you understand that it, it may be necessary for you to face these things that you couldn't face in the past, that's when therapy can be very helpful. But if you're not ready for it, I suggest maybe more light approaches. And don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, the, there's a lot of therapists that ask, they offer free uh, consultations. So you can just um, see what makes you comfortable, what's comfortable for you uh, and what's not. And that's fine. I see that some people come to therapy, but they're not ready for therapy. No, and that's, that's, the, that's the problem, I think. We call therapy too many things. I guess we're trying to look into tools that we can call as self-improvement tools, but all therapeutic approach have that very different purposes. Uh, and that's why we have so many different tools. If you ask me my ideal therapeutic approach, uh, as I said before, is the holistic approach and a more embodied and experimental approach rather than just a talking therapy or just uh, passively receiving healing. I think those things can be helpful to a certain extent, but I think they're also very limited in what they can offer and provide. And you want me to go into energy healing? <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, well, my relationship with energy healing has changed a lot through the years. Uh, I started with energy healing. It's a very I started with Egyptian esteem therapies, which is a very complex and uh, profound way of working with people. And I loved with all my heart. I think it really set myself to understand my passion into the emotional dimension of the self. I think that's primarily what I'm interested in. But at the same time, I, can, I could see how just working energetically without understanding how to cancel during the healing process, because just releasing something, it doesn't mean that you, you know what you're letting go of. It's always best when you have an awareness of what you're letting go of. And I saw people just releasing, constantly releasing, releasing, releasing. But, but what is it that you're releasing? Like people screaming and shouting and crying and... And then I thought, yeah, but what is it that you are releasing? Like, why, you know, do we need to go through this process of constantly triggering the emotional plan without the integration also of the understanding of the mind, the energetic understanding of the release, but also a more profound understanding when inside you are learning from the experience that have caused so much pain in your life. And I think that by having an understanding, a conscious understanding of it, you're more likely to make embodied changes. And that's why I'm a big fan of combining therapy with coaching. Because with healing, you have an opportunity to let go of whatever emotional overwhelm you may be carrying in your life, but then you're left with a bit of a void. So what's now? So, okay, I understood that the old mechanism did not work for me, it was dysfunctional, but what is best for me now? So what is the way that works for me? And I think you learn that by doing it. So it means we're going to practice that. We're going to find a way that is functional for you. 
as I integrated counseling into energy healing for me, it was much easier to facilitate the process because I guide the person to become aware of how specific emotions are stuck in specific parts of the body. Instead of just uh, having it in your mind or imagining things, you make a conscious connection by using your body. And your body never lies. You can tell yourself whatever you like, but your bodies will always tell you where you're at. And I think sometimes we think we are better <laughs> than what we actually or We think we are more evolved than what we actually are. Uh, and I think the body will, will tell you exactly where you are and what's happening for you. Uh, I'm not saying that you're not good. <laughs> People are not good. Or, but I think sometimes we have, um, we have an idea of things that do not match reality. And that's why the body is the compass and the body will tell you whatever conflict or dysfunction or where unresolved emotions are stored. Uh, that's why I love to work with the body and um, and to constantly check in with the body. I've done Reiki as well, but I, I moved away from Reiki because I think Reiki is very helpful. For example, if you are in a state that the body needs nourishment and you don't have enough energy to process consciously specific things, but I wouldn't use Reiki as um, as a tool to gain awareness. There's not dialogue there, it's just, uh, it's just a passive way of receiving healing. And that's why I like to distinguish between active therapy and passive therapy. Uh, so I'm very much on the active spectrum, <laughs> if that wasn't clear enough. <laughs> but I'm also, I'm also a big believer that passive therapy is very helpful, but it serves a different purpose. So that's why you have to, for example, if you're going through emotional drainage you are very tired and fatigue or you have chronic fatigue i wouldn't suggest to go for an active approach you don't have enough energy to handle it to go through an explorative profound deep journey you need energy to handle it if you're completely depleted you want to start by just receiving and nourishing the self we don't need to go and dig into whatever shadow of the self. If you're already drained and tired, how are you going to handle that, that, that level of work? And then obviously, when you have enough energy, you can move to the next step, which is like, okay, now I can handle processing and integrating this and that. Nothing is right or wrong, but because people are unique individuals, I do believe that tools should be adapted to people rather than trying to adapt people to the tools. Roy Hunter stressed people a lot about this. Like we don't suit the, the method to the people. We try to listen to the person needs and then adapt the tools we have to their needs. And that's why I think, again, as a therapist, you need to have a lot of tools. You have to do a lot of work on yourself because you need to have that flexibility and dynamism when you work with people. If you don't, you're very limited in what you can offer. I think that there's two ways to go. For example, I, I often receive two different type of clients. There are one type that are very, very specific in what they need. So they come with a specific issue. And when they come with a specific issue, I want to say that it's slightly easier to work with that because we can, we can focus on, okay, so this is what you want to resolve. This is going to be uh, the focus on our work together. Even though I say that, we start with that. And then I, <laughs> I always say, well, we'll be ready that maybe the peeling the onion process will start, which means we're starting with this and then other things may surface at the same time. So just be open with that. And then there's other people that they just experience discomfort or they are aware that something in, in right or... Something is off alignment, but they don't know what that is. So I noticed that when people don't have a specific focus or they don't know exactly what the issue may be, it's a longer process because part of the journey is about identifying what the issue is and, and what to start with. But there's variation to that. So if you want to prepare for the therapeutic process, I want to say get rid of all preconcepts you may have get rid of all the things you already know, get rid of all the things you think are going to work for you, uh, be as open-minded open as you can, be very honest with your therapist, don't hold back, 
I think it's important as a therapist to receive feedback on things that work or don't work or things that make you comfortable or uncomfortable. I think it's important to have an ongoing conversation between client and therapist and enjoy it. Approach it with a playful uh, attitude. Yes, of course, we're going to cry. We're going to cry a lot. Sometimes I hold my tears. I know I shouldn't say that because as a therapist, uh, but there are things that, have, that touch me profoundly. So sometimes I do hide a little tear <laughs> when I hear uh, very touching stories. The therapeutic space is just a playground. And if you approach it with that mindset, you can make the most out of it. Because ultimately what we do, we play the self out in all its form, its parts, and you can be as expressive as you like. There's no limits to it. And, um, and, and the therapist is just there to provide that emotional container, that safety element to it. But you can be as creative as you like with it. Uh, be curious about yourself. I'll say that's, that's what's very needed. <laughs> At least this is how I go to therapy. <laughs> Therapy gave me an opportunity to go beyond what I thought of me and, uh, and allowed me to be more comfortable with me. I think I got to this point of falling in love with myself, uh, falling in love with the most challenging aspects of me. It really helped me embrace my contrast. But therapy has provided a space for me to expand expand in a way that I, I don't think it was going to be possible without therapy I have received, but also learning how to be a therapist. Uh, I've been a perfectionist my whole life, always trying to be the best of this and the best of that and competing. And I think at the moment, I don't feel that pressure anymore of being perfect. The pressure is no longer there for me as I realize that I'm not comparing myself anymore to anything or anyone. I am more and more focused on nourishing what I bring into this world. How can I be the best of myself? How to make as many mistakes as I can? How to recover from that? Uh, but not trying to avoid that anymore. Not to blame myself when something doesn't go as planned. Not to feel shame when my little selves or little parts or inner childs or whatever we want to call it, comes out and they play their little parts because they still have their needs. Uh, I haven't figured out my life, all of my life yet. I think there's a lot more to come. And I like it. I like that this is an ongoing journey. I never think that this will end or, you know, I'm going <laughs> to get to the <laughs> end line and it's going to look that way. I think life has surprised me in many, many ways. Um, I'm more flexible. I used to be very rigid. Also understanding that not everybody may like you, but that doesn't mean that you should compromise yourself because of that. That teaches us how to stand up for yourself, to show up for yourself. Because if you don't, if you don't show up for yourself, even when, you know, you are in a pool of crap, who, who's going to? <laughs> like, we're expecting others, others to save us, to get us out of this, uh, of the sheep pools. But actually, <laughs> if you're not the first person there showing up and for you or giving you a hand, why, why are the people should? If you do not believe in yourself, if you're not able to forgive yourself for your own crap, why should other people do that? I think we have so many expectations of people loving us and appreciating us and all of that. But the question is, can you do that for yourself? Even when your behaviors are not the best, when you are low, can you, can you just show up for yourself and just be with you, sit with you? Um, appreciate, understand. And I think the more you do that for yourself, the more you are able to do that for other people because you see the humanity within you and you're more willing to accept the humanity within others. Well, thank you, Maria. You're welcome. <laughs>